hello everybody this is a little bit different for me to be doing something like this me not being the technology person that most of you know that already but nevertheless on uh, desperate times call for different measures right we're thankful that we're able to do this tonight though so we got a little bit of sickness going around some people traveling of course i being one of them out of town so i'm doing this actually from sarah and matthews uh, upstairs at their house uh, so I'm sitting here with them. We've been to church already tonight with Sarah, and, and now we're getting ready to put together something here for uh, us tonight there in Arizona City. We're thankful for everybody else that may be watching or listening from elsewhere. Let's ask the Lord to help us. So we'll go ahead and get right into this. Let's begin with prayer and ask the Lord's blessings upon this time, okay? Lord, we come to you tonight. We thank you for what you've done. We thank you for the opportunity you've given us and the privilege we have to continue Lord, we know that there's difficulties that arise at times and there's things that come up. And Lord, sometimes we have to uh, change gears and, and go back to you and ask us ask you what you would have us to do in that moment, Lord. And, and this week, as we have heavy hearts for people like Miss Joan, who's in the hospital, and then we have others of our church that are uh, having illness or not feeling well. Lord, we are thankful, though, that we can come together even in this way tonight. Maybe we can't come together right now. Lord, like we have all in the past, Lord, but I pray that you'd bless this service tonight anyway and help us prepare to meet together again on the Lord's Day. And we ask your recovery for those that are sick. And Lord, for those that are hurting, uh, encourage them and those, Lord, like myself that are traveling and others, Lord, also that are traveling. There's many of us that you bring us back home again safely and give us a time there we're rejoicing. Bless this time. May you receive all the glory in Christ's name. Amen. All righty. And Luke chapter 10, we'll forego the music tonight since uh, I have no one playing instruments or anything like that. And you're thankful I'm not going to sing for you a cappello. So nevertheless, we'll just get right into the Bible study. In Luke chapter 10, verse 38, the Bible says, Now it came to pass as they went and he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about, much serving, and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful. And Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. You know, we're living in a time right now, and I guess most of us would agree with this, definitely in my life, it's very easy for me to be distracted. It's very easy for me to get my eyes off what they should be looking at and get my eyes on so many other things that's going on and going around. And we will need to ask the Lord to help us and guide us through this time. Uh, for someone uh, like myself who is trying to not only care and provide for the needs of a family, but also... Uh, direct a church. Now, I, I, pray, I covet your prayers in that. Uh, for you, as you guide your families and on your jobs and different responsibilities that you have, we're praying for you. We're all faced with certain different circumstances and we're all facing different things that we go through. But nevertheless, if you're saved, there's one Lord overall. And therefore, he knows what's going on. He's not distracted as we are. He's not uh, fearful as we may be. Uh, he's not worried. Uh, he knows because he is God. Everything that goes on goes on by his permission and by his allowance. So tonight we want to look at this text here where Martha and Mary literally are, are having Christ very, literally bodily enter into their home. And the Bible says as they went and entered into a certain village that a certain woman named Martha received him unto her house. I think one of the first things we need to look at tonight is we all need the Lord in our home. We need to allow him to be in our homes, to guide our house, uh, to influence our family. And there's lots of things that we can do to maybe encourage that, and yet there's also things that we can do to keep that from happening. And today, in a world where we're living in, with so much technology and things taking place, uh, one of the things that many of you have heard me say in the times past, one of the things that worries me and concerns me about these days is the simple fact that it seems like no one is ever without something in their ear. Whether it be noise going on from a ball game or some entertainment, whether it be earbuds listening to some music or some news feed, or many different things like that, there are so many things that distract us and discourage us and keeps us from ever be having our ourselves calmed down. And although we often listen to those things thinking they're calming us, 
there's only one Prince of Peace, and in saying that, there's only one person, not one thing, but there's one person that can bring us true peace and really calm us like no one else. And of course, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. So we have here Martha inviting the Lord into her house. And the Bible says in verse 39, And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Well, the interesting thing about Martha's house is Mary's, the sister of Martha's in the house, but, but Mary is sitting at Jesus' feet. Now, this is a, a special guest. This is someone that's, that's not visiting every day. And sometimes in our life, we have these moments where we have an opportunity to hear. Maybe a church, our church, maybe having a special speaker, a revival meeting. And, and although we all may, may use the same Bible and the same, you teach it in Sunday school, hear it preached in the pulpit, it's good to hear someone else. It's good to hear someone and take the Word of God, rightly divide it, open it, and teach us and preach to us from God's Word. Sometimes we can hear our parents or even our pastor say something multiple times, but when a guest speaker says, he can say the same thing, uh, but say it just slightly different, and it seems to ring a bell. It seems to get our attention more than any other time. So I'm thankful that God allows those things to happen. And now Mary here, if Jesus' is very special guest has come into the home, Mary is, is just literally sitting at his feet. And the Bible says, as she was sitting at his feet, she heard his word. She wasn't just sitting, but she was listening. And as she sat there listening, she was paying attention to what the Lord was saying, the Bible says in verse number 40, but, but Martha was cumbered about much serving. One of the real, real issues of my life, and anybody that knows me knows this, I can very easily be more of a Martha mentality than a Mary mentality. I desire to be the Mary. I want to sit at Jesus' feet. I want to learn and hear from him. But one of the real factors of my life is uh, the way I'm put together, my, my, I have to battle my flesh to calm myself down to sit down sometimes. It's one of the things that I have to do. I, I like to be busy. I enjoy being busy. Working literally is like a hobby to me. I enjoy working. I enjoy doing different things. And in this season of my life, there's, those things sometimes are different than they were 20 years ago. And I'm sure they're different than they will be 20 years from now for Lord Terry's is coming. But the reality of it is, in this season of my life, it's a time of my life where I need to walk with the Lord. Hear from Him, listen to Him, and pay attention to Him. So I need to invite Him into my presence I need to pray and, and walk with him daily. But then I also need to listen to what he has for me for, for this season of my life. Now, I can be the guy that, that is trying to get everything done. I'll find myself often on Sunday mornings. There are hours before the services. And I'm doing things like going around the church, just making sure that everything's in place. The, the, the pews, the, there's no leftover bulletins or there's no wrinkled up uh, 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 giving envelopes or... Uh, that the seats are all straight or the song books are all turned right. I'll walk through the Sunday school classrooms. I'll go in the bathrooms and make sure that, uh, that there's nothing that's left there that wasn't expected. I'll make sure that there's nothing that's in disarray. And I don't hit everything, of course, but then I'll usually walk around the parking lot just for a few moments, look for any trash that may have blown in overnight or someone dropped as they were getting in or out of a vehicle. And I catch myself going back over the windows again, even though they may have been cleaned the day before. Through the night, the wind may have blown some dust on them. And I'll catch myself looking at things uh, vacuuming up maybe some bugs or sweeping up some bugs that, that, that may be in a corner because over the night they may have come in the door or whatever because of lights. And I'll find myself sometimes spending two or three hours even before the morning service doing those things just because I want to make sure that things are tidy and neat. And yet sometimes I get convicted about that because really maybe those two or three hours will be better spent in my office reading, praying, studying, and getting close to God because in just a few moments... I'm going to be stepping into the pulpit and teaching a Sunday school class, and then an hour later, stepping into the pulpit to teach and preach to our church family, and then later that night as well. And now that we've even added the 8.30 service, uh, some of those things that maybe went by the wayside I'm not able to do because of the amount of time that I was, but I still find myself cumbered about. And the Bible says here, it uses this, Martha was cumbered about much serving. There was a cumbersome in her life. Uh, anyone that knows me knows this is true. Often, if I'm working on something, I know I have the tool or the parts that I need. But sometimes I can't find them because of the cumbersomeness of my garage or the cumbersomeness of my work area. Well, my life can be just like that, and so can yours. We can find our lives cumbered about with much things. In the day and age, and in the day and age that we're living in right now, and especially with what's going on right now with this COVID-19 and coronavirus, and, and then, of course, everything else going on with it being an election season, and then the various things about the, the, the wildfires, at least in our state, and, 
and, and the different sicknesses of people in our church, the, the, the couple of people that's had strokes recently and the difficulties they're facing with that, uh, and then people that's just sick, missing, working extra hours, traveling on vacation, school getting ready to start back, not knowing exactly how or when that's going to start or what it's going to look like when it starts, trying to plan and prepare for different things that's up and coming in our church, such as the men meeting up and coming here before long, and the retreat that we host from our state and different pastors and churches will be attending, uh, to moving even forward beyond that into our fall year, fall of the year and, and in our anniversary service and things. There's always things that will cumber our thoughts, cumber our mind, cumber our life. And in doing so, because of that, sometimes we, we find ourselves so busy that we become cumbered about. Uh, someone would often say you have too many irons in the fire. They may say that to you or to me or someone else. Uh, you have too many irons in the fire. The reality of it is sometimes we just have too many fires burning in general. We've got too many things going that we just don't, don't seem to take our hands off of. We seem to try to keep this moving and that moving. And not that they're even evil or wicked or sinful things. They just are cumbersome things. And the Bible says this, Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said to the Lord, Dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? One of the things that we can do, and I can get this way as easy as anyone can, and maybe even quicker sometimes, and we all need to be careful that we admit this, we can find ourselves sometimes with the cumbersome of our life, thinking because no one's jumping in and helping us in one certain area, one certain thing, we can feel like that no one cares. And we can literally find ourselves, if we're not careful, even a place where Martha is, where Martha says to the Lord himself, do you not care about what I'm going through? We need to be careful that we don't, that we don't come to that place. And tonight we need to take an opportunity to seek the Lord and ask his forgiveness if that's where our hearts be in. Sometimes we can grow very cold, very uncaring towards our very church family, those that have prayed for us, helped us, maybe even brought us to Christ. We become uncaring to them sometimes because we've, we've cumbered our life with things. And now we, we feel like the Lord doesn't care. And because someone else is not responding to everything that we're doing, we feel like maybe even they don't care either. And that's a real dangerous place to be because it will cause us to isolate ourselves. And I know we're going through a thing right now that's been going on since March in our country with this COVID-19 where... Uh, the government and people are staying social distance, social distance. You've heard me say in the past, I don't like that phrase social distancing because it takes the social out of our life. And we need that. God designed us to be social people. He put every one of us in a family. He gives every one of us, once we know him as our savior, a church family. And he tells us not to forsake that church family, the assembling of ourselves with our church family because he created us to be social people. So I don't like social distancing. If we need to physically distance sometimes, I understand. We need to do that maybe for the health of us or someone else. But, you know, these are things that we need to do. But we need to be careful that we don't become isolated. Because when we become isolated, we have no one that realizes what's going on in our life. You may be going through something right now that you feel like no one cares about. But the reality of it is, if you're someone that's part of our church, and I say that because of who this is primarily directed towards tonight, uh, our church family knows who you are. And our church family prays for you. I know the church family prays for me and my family. As a result of that, I don't need to get in a mindset where no one cares because that's not an accurate mindset. While my wife and I have been gone for the last few days on vacation to see her family back in Tennessee, which is where I'm at tonight at Sarah's house, headed out tomorrow back to Arizona. Uh, as our family of Crystal and I and Jacob have been gone, people have called and texted numbers and numbers of times this past week. Hey, just letting you know we love you, praying for you, keeping you updated on what's going on with my family member or my loved one or, or this person in the church or let me know what's going on with this person's family that's in the church. I appreciate that so much. I don't want to be left alone. I don't want to be, just because I'm out of the state, I don't want to be isolated from my church family. We've had the privilege to come back here and spend some time with our biological family this week which, by the way, is still part of the family of God for most, most of our family because most of mine and Crystal's family have trusted the Lord as our Savior. And as a result of that, we have a great relationship and we have a great friendship and kinship here on earth as well as in heaven with our biological family. And even though we've been back here and having a great time with them, we've been able to slow down this trip, relax a little bit, spend some time with a lot of different people in different ways. Of course, some of you know this. They, they surprised me and throwed a, a belated 50th birthday party and on Saturday and had, of course, all the things that you would have done too, and, and some of you even did, uh, presenting me with things 
uh, that would help me as I grow more feeble, right? And we had a good time with that and laughed about that. And I, and I appreciate it and, and that friendship and the kindness they're shown. And, and the reality of it is we need that. Uh, we need to laugh. We need to cry. We need to support and hug each other. So we're going through a time right now, maybe we can't do that as much as we once could because of someone being sick or, or, or the, the anxiety of what may be going on in our, our own county and our state. And other states are maybe sometimes worse than ours, but even we've got certain things mandated now. And one of the things about a mask that bothers me is, uh, I'm, you know me, I'm like, I like to smile and enjoy and joke and prank and cut up. And when I'm in stores and things like that, I often find myself talking to someone and I'm smiling and I realize I'm smiling, but they can't see me smile. I'll make a comment to them and I'm joking or I'm smiling, but they don't know that because they can't see my face because I'm covered in a mask. Well, the Bible says that these things are common to all men. These temptations of frustrations, these temptations of discouragement, these temptations of isolation, they're common to all men because that's what temptation is, because our flesh is weak. But the Bible says God has provided a way of escape. And we find the way of escape here in this very story of Mary and Martha, we find this way of escape at Jesus' feet. So right now, whether you're one of our church family that is sick or maybe hospitalized or isolated at home, whatever the case may be, uh, or you're out of town on vacation, as many of our folks are this very week and last week, then take an opportunity to get yourself to Jesus' feet right now. Take an opportunity to find your way back to the Savior. There's going to be lots of things going to distract you. You're going to be on vacation. I want you to be on vacation if the Lord allows you to do that. Do that. Enjoy your time with your family, friends, or whatever you're doing. But while you're there, uh, don't isolate yourself from the Lord. Don't isolate yourself from, the, from your church family, from those that love you, those that are under the blood with you. And then I'd encourage you this. Uh, while you're out, whether it be away from church due to sickness or illness or, or uh, preservation of something or whether you're on vacation out of town, whatever the case may be, take an opportunity to be at Jesus' feet. Because it's not just the temptations of the world that's going to get and distract you. It's the temptation of isolation. You'll find yourself like, Mar like Martha means saying, Lord, does thou not care? You'll feel like no one's doing anything for you or about your situation because you've purposely isolated yourself and no one knows what you're going through. The Bible says we need to pray one for another. How do we do that? Then we share our burdens one with another. The Bible says this, she comes to the Lord and says, does thou not care that, I, that, that my sister hath left me to serve alone? See, the thing about it is Martha had isolated herself. Mary was with the Lord. All that Martha had to do was join Mary and the Lord, and she would not have been alone. But she says, I'm alone, and I feel like I'm in service alone. None of us are that if you're in the Lord. And the Bible says this, bid her therefore that she help me. Let me ask a question this evening. How many times have we gotten our agenda in front of the Lord's? I said earlier, I can be tempted to spend more time on Sunday mornings walking the property, tidying things up maybe. And even though we have faithful people in our church, Mr. C does a great job cleaning and, and organizing and straightening things up. And he is a great help to me. He does it multiple times a week, not just on Saturday. He does it multiple times, but I'll still find myself going around, just checking things, double checking, looking at things because things happen. We have so many people in and out of our building through the week. And I just want to make sure that things are clean and neat as they can be before the service starts in the Lord's house on the Lord's day. But the reality of it is sometimes the things that I'm worrying and covering my life about, no one else would even take note of. No one else would even notice those things. But you know what will be noticed? If I go to the pulpit, pulpit without the power of God upon my life. If I go to the pulpit and I just go up there to shoot from the hip, uh, to, just, to just give my opinion, if I just go up there unprepared, unprayed, and I stand up there exhausted in the flesh because I've not been spiritually preparing, because I've been cumbering my life with things that's going on about me. So I need to take care, and I encourage all of you all to do the same. The Bible says this in verse 41. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. Notice the Lord, he calls out, there's many things in your life. But verse number 42 says, but one thing is needful. Martha, there's many things in your life. And because of that, it's, it's worrying you much. All of those things are causing much worry in your life. But Martha, you need one thing in your life. And Mary hath chosen that good part. He does, does, not, does not say that Mary is more loved or Mary is better. He just, he just simply says Mary has made the better choice. 
And in doing so, which shall not be taken away from her. He says, all these things you're worrying about. For me, I'll say it this way. Cleaning the windows, they're going to get spotted up the very moment the church opens. Children's going to come in. Adults are going to come in. They're going to be handling the glass. I may have cleaned that glass five minutes before the, before the service starts. And five minutes after it starts, there's going to be handprints all over it. I can dust the piano, dust the table in the foyer that's already been dusted on Saturday, but because of a dust storm Saturday night, I may dust it again. And it, but, but as soon as people come in and out, then on Sunday, it's going to be dusty again. Fingerprints are going to be on the piano. They're going to be on the table in the foyer. The water fountain is going to be, have more water spots on it. There's going to be more water on the countertops of the bathroom. Uh, there's going to be more dirt in the floor. There's going to be more trash in the, in, the, in the parking lot. No matter what is done, the things of this world are going to repeat themselves again and again. We're going to be worrying ourselves, worrying ourselves, worrying ourselves to the point that we will be so overcome that we will literally feel like even the Lord himself doesn't care. But he says this, because Mary has chose the better part. She's made the better choice with what she's spending her time doing. The Bible says that will not be taken from her. There's something you cannot get back is time that you could have had with the Lord. Uh, this past week, my wife and I have had the opportunity to spend some time with our family. Uh, our oldest daughter and her husband, uh, we spent some time with, with my mom and dad and her mom and her sister and brother-in-law and nephew and, and my brother and his wife and, and my nieces and nephews. We spent some time with some friends and neighbors. We spent some time with some church families. We've had a great week. It's honestly, it's been a great vacation. We've been more relaxed. We've, we've, we've got more rest this time. We, our trip across the country was easier driving. All these things has, has made this trip much more restful. But the reality of it is, these days that we've spent there have been quality days. Now, while we've been gone, things have taken and, and some things have changed in Arizona. But as a result of that, we'll go back, and Lord willing, we'll be back Friday night, and on Saturday we'll address some of those things, and we'll do some things to prepare for the Lord's Day and we'll check on some things. We've already been checking on people all while we've been gone. But the reality is I can't get these days back. I said to my dad yesterday, he and I were driving down the road together, maybe even this morning, I don't remember when it was, yesterday I guess it was. I said, listen, uh, I would like you and mom to be able to spend, find some time to do some things that you've been wanting to do. And he'll be 73 years old here in a couple of days. And, and as a result of that, the time that he's spending right now, he cannot get back. So at his age, I want him and mom, if they can, and I know none of us can do everything we want to do all the time, but, but I want them to take an opportunity on occasion and, and take their camper or whatever and go somewhere, slow down, get away, and enjoy their time together because these days are passing. And what will happen is these things can't be, given, can't be taken back. We can't get these days back. But our time with the Lord is something that influences us not only today, but it also helps us tomorrow and the next week and the next month and the next year. So spend some time with the Lord. The Bible says, and I'll close with this. The Bible says over in a few verses earlier, as the Lord has sent out 70 laborers. And the Bible says now in verse 17, the 70 returned again with joy saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said to them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and on scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not, that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice, because your names are written in heaven. Here's the amazing thing about it. When these people went out, when these laborers went out, they went out with the power of God upon them. As a result of that, when they returned, they had a good report of what God had done through them. And he says, listen, but even what you're going through right now and what you're experiencing, this is going to pass. But there's one thing I want you to focus on, he says. I want you to rejoice that the fact that your names are written in heaven. So as I close the night with this, I challenge you with this. Whatever you do this week, whatever you do this evening, whatever come, is, comes your way, let's not be so cumbered. If you're without Christ, be so cumbered with the things of the world and the worries and the fears of what's going on in our world that you neglect to do the most important thing, come to Christ as your personal Savior. If you're not saved, ask Him right now to forgive your sins, to ask, ask Him right now to save your soul, ask Him right now to come into your heart and save you. And the Bible says if you believe, not just say the words, but if you believe with your heart and confess with your mouth, that you can be saved. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So if you're in saved tonight, don't let the worries of this world so cumber you down and your responsibility with life or even religion that you won't come to Christ. And if you are saved tonight, I'll challenge you with this. 
Don't let the words of this world cumber you so much that you won't be used of him. Go out with his power upon you. Speak with his power upon your voice. Live your life with his power of victory over your life, in your life, so that people see your life different than theirs, victorious over sin, death, hell, and the grave. Let them, let them see a life of victory. They don't see that in the world. They see a life of defeat, a life of worry, a life of constant battle. Let them see a Christian that lives for Christ, a victorious Christian life, consecrated, separated by God's word, filled with the Holy Spirit, that when you return to the people of God, you will have an opportunity to testify of his might through his name. Amen? Let's pray. Lord, we come to you tonight. We thank you for what you've done. Guide us now at this time. Help us, Lord. Use this time together for your glory in our lives till we come together again. In Christ's name, amen. It's been great. Hope you enjoyed it. Looking forward to seeing you on the Lord's Day.